I want to get back to the less opposition to the president's tax reform plan. Listen to one Democrat congressman who did not hesitate to tell Maria this morning what's wrong with it. Roll tape. Right now it's a lot of happy talk. We need to get into the details. First of all, the happy talk of this will probably increase the deficit in the United States anywhere from two and a half trillion to five trillion dollars. So if you're a deficit hawk, you've got to be very, very careful about what we're talking about here. Uh, with regard to uh, income inequality, there's a probability, at least from what we know right now, that there would be an increase in income inequality as a result of this. Well, that's interesting. A Democrat worried about the deficit, having exploded it and doubled it in the last eight years. However, I digress. Let's bring in Tony Sayeg. He's the U.S. Treasury Assist Assistant Secretary for Public Affairs. All right, Tony, what's your reaction to that laundry list of talking points from the Democrats? I know what it's going to be, but just do it. Good morning, Stuart. Great to be with you, the panel, and of course your viewers. You know, it, it's very interesting. You know, the last eight years have essentially led to no wage growth because we focused on redistribution and not economic growth. And when you really think of the fact that Democrats are suggesting that we're going to bust a deficit, uh, it's essentially coming from a group that has doubled the debt in eight years because of their policies. You know, we are confident that with the growth we're projecting from tax reform, with the base broadening and the pay force that we have in this, um, we're going to get to actual deficit reduction within the next 10 years to pay down the debt. So that's a very important aspect. Uh, we just got a revised growth number of 3.1 percent. Uh, in the second quarter, and Democrats are saying that we can't get sustained 3% growth ongoing. That's just simply false. So, you know, we don't really uh, want to engage in the kind of political rhetoric here. The bottom line is the American economy needs to grow. We need a tax system that works for everybody, not just the wealthy and the well-connected and those who have lobbyists here in Washington. And we need to create jobs so that okay. can get pay raises for the workers who have them now. I don't think this was actually in the, I think it was a 13-page document. I don't think this was in, but I'm talking now about the getting rid of the deduction for state and local taxes. I don't think that was in the written form of that 13-page document. But it's a very big deal, isn't it? Because that's how you soak the rich. Because if they can no longer deduct all the taxes they're paying in New York, California, etc., etc., they end up paying more in this. I, I mean, have I got the math right here? I think you're exactly right, Stuart. And look, you know, we do call for, in obviously our framework, the elimination of all itemized deductions. State and local is a big one. It's almost, I think, worth $1.3 trillion. So ironically, you're now going to have Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer essentially defend a benefit with this deduction that has 80% of the people who receive it making six figures. And on the other side, you have the president, Congress, and frankly, a lot of moderate Democrats. You, uh, you may have seen the Blue Dog Democrat group released a very favorable statement yesterday as to the framework. These are mostly moderate and conservative Democrats standing up for middle income tax cuts. So here's what we need to make sure people understand above the rhetoric. We are eliminating the 10 percent rate. Most of the people in that rate are now going to be in an expanded 0 percent bracket. We eliminate the 15 percent rate and go down to 12 percent. And those, most of those taxpayers are going to ha now have a significantly lower rate. Okay. We're expanding the child tax credit, doubling the standard deduction. These all are things that benefit middle-income families, and that is the focus of the president's tax cut on the, on the individual now, side. Give me the timeline here. The president and you guys at the Treasury and the Congress, you want to get this done, signed, sealed, delivered this year. Is that correct? Yes. Now, do you need 50 votes? in the Senate to pass it, or 60 votes? Which is it? I, I, don't, I don't know all about this reconciliation. I'm not sure about this. Are you going to need 50 or 60? Look, obviously, as you saw yesterday with the president inviting Senator Donnelly, a Democrat, to Indiana, his last trip to North Dakota, he brought a Democratic senator, Heidi Heitkamp. He's making some outreach in yesterday's speech. He talked about how there has been a bipartisan best practice when it comes to tax reform and tax cuts historically, whether you look at Kennedy or Reagan and beyond. It's always been something we've been able to, as both parties agree to do. Um, unfortunately, it's a hyper-political, hyper-partisan, obstructionist environment today. But the president's still making the outreach. But essentially, we can pass this with 51 votes if we get the proper reconciliation instructions once we pass our budget. And we feel confident that that will happen. Gotcha. Tony Sag from the Treasury. Thanks for joining us, sir. Appreciate it.